AI Coder is the scribe's tool that allows you to analyze textual data and automatically create a codebook. It does so by organizing similar ideas into these hierarchical themed categories that can then be uh, manually manipulated if needed. So we're going to work today with this um, big box store CSAT responses. Uh, we have two questions that have um, about 1,500 responses each, and we're going to start out in a scribe coder. So today we're going to both analyze the data, see how it's organized, um, bring it back into a scribe coder, and talk about how we can deliver that data, or we can also clean it up in AI coder. So we'll be looking at both of those things today. So the verbatim responses, let's go ahead and bring those up. The responses we're going to be working with today, um, they're 2,974 total. And we have small responses like best restocking, more food products, and we have larger responses that cover multiple ideas. So what AI Coder is going to do is it's going to analyze these 2,974 responses and um, suggest a codebook for us. So we're going to go ahead and unlock the codebook. AI Coder is a tool within Ascribe Coder today, and we're going to choose AI Coder, um, AI Coder Beta. Once we open up AI Coder, we're going to just go ahead and analyze by hitting the Go button. And the system's going to go through now and segment all of those responses. So break the responses into segments and then combine similar segments into codes. So it's going to look for semantics, semantically similar phrases using natural language processing tools, um, artificial intelligence to pull those like segments together and categorize them into a code. We will then be presented with a straight list code book. So this is our straight list code book. Um, AI Coder is suggesting 92 codes. It has suggested 92 codes encoded 71% of the data. So at least 71% of the responses will receive one of these 92 codes. We do have a few options here with the code book. Um, before we get into that, this is telling us about the project that we're in and the data that we've analyzed. Um, it's telling us 2,115 responses were coded out of 2,974. And we do have some options to add more codes to the codebook if we like, or bring less codes, fewer codes. So we can get more specific and break it down into more codes, or we can get more broad and combine these into smaller codes. Um, so for this particular exercise, I am going to go ahead and suggest more codes. So now you'll see that it's suggesting 137 codes and 77% is now coded. Um, so 2,298 out of 2,974. And we can hit the button again if we liked until we came up with the percent coded that we thought worked for us or that worked for us. Now, a couple things. Um, we can actually, these are the codes, okay? Um, and a code to look at here is keep up the good work. A keep up the good work has 89 segments. So 89 segments were combined to create this keep up the good work code. Segments can be removed from a code by hitting the little X. Um, we can change the wording of the code by clicking on the little um, greater than sign. So we can change the wording of the code if we like. We're gonna go ahead and keep that at keep up the good work. We can actually rename the code by clicking into the box or clicking on the code and renaming it. We can move a segment from one code to another. So um, continue doing great business. If we've decided that should go in a different code, we can pull that out and drop it in another code. Any movement that we do or any action that we take, we can always undo that action or redo the action. So I'm going to bring those segments back up. Um, we still have 89 segments here. Um, so that's what we can do with the segments. With the actual codes, we can actually combine codes together. So like if I wanted to put keep up the good work and the store is excellent in the same code, so we've got the store is excellent and keep up the good work, maybe in my world, those mean the same thing. So I will pull keep up the good work and put it into the store is excellent, okay? Um, so we can combine codes. We can also um, net codes. So we can, we can actually choose codes that are similar and net them together. And you might use the search to help you do that. So if I look for price 
Um, if I look for codes that have something to do with price, cost, or expense, um, I'm going to bring up all the codes that have something to do with price, cost, and expense. Here they are. And I want to select these. I'll select the ones that I think should go in my net. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of these right now. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to say, let's net these. So I'm going to add a new net and I'm going to call it my price net. We hit OK. So I can manually net these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove my search. So now I have a net called price and all the other codes are in a net called other codes. I could also just tell the system, hey, I want to go ahead and net these um, automatically. I want the system to suggest nets, put like codes together for me, and then I can go in and clean that up. So the system's going through and netting those codes now. Um, so now I have um, a net that has something to do with open, checkout employees in the customer's area. And I can see I've got cashiers, checkout lanes, checkout lines. Um, I think checkout lanes and checkout lines are the same thing, so I'm going to combine those. The way that the checkout line is long, faster checkout. Um, often there are not enough cashiers open, so I'm going to put that on more cashiers available. And we can continue to, to decide which of these, um, which of these should, should go together. Um, long lines, um, let's see, I'm going to just call this long lines. I'm going to rename it. Long lines, get rid of the rest of this so I can deal with that. But yeah, we could continue, we could continue working with this um, and try to figure out where things should go. Um, or even if these should be, these codes should be in, in the individual nets, um, we can remove them and they would go back to the other codes. Uh, but yeah, we could clean it up. So this is a netted version of the AI codes and we could continue cleaning this up um, here if we wanted to, um, but, or we could pull it into a scribe coder. Um, exporting it to a scribe coder would, well, we'll go ahead and export it to a scribe coder. It's going to create 136 codes in my code book and code 2,298 responses. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to pull this code book directly into a scribe coder where I could continue to work on this, this um, project if I wanted to there, um, refining it, you know, making sure everything is where I want it, combining codes, um, you know, getting it in order a little more. So now the results of um, AI Coder are here in Ascribe Coder. And you can see the counts and percentages for the different codes and use your Ascribe Coder tools to clean it up if you like. If I look at a specific code, I'm going to right click and hit search any. Um, you'll see that the piece of the response that goes with a particular code um, is highlighted. And we do also have these others. So these others um, down here at the bottom, others here, there we go. Others are any of the, um, here we go, any a segment that did not receive a code. Maybe it didn't have semantically similar um, segments, but any of those will be listed here in others. And you can tell which part of the response is causing it to be put into the other code. Okay. We can um, actually go back into Ascribe AI Coder. There we go. Go back into AI Coder. And once we're back into AI Coder, we can pick up where we left off, um, clean this up more, and figure things out until we have this organized in a way that works for us. And once we do so, we can save it. So I could save this AI Coder code book, and I'm going to call this store version two and hit OK. Once a code book is saved, an AI code book is saved, you can actually start out with that AI code book. So you could say, hey, I want to start out with my store code book, or I want to start out with my store version two code book. Maybe you want to start out with your fitness code book if this is your fitness data. But at any time, you can um, start out with that code book. So next time I do a store study um, or a big box study, Megamart study, I can start out with this um, AI code book without having to do the manual manipulations in AI Coder and then pull it right back into a Scribe Coder and finish my project there. So AI Coder allows us to quickly create a code book, um, pull it right into a Scribe Coder. Once it's pulled into a Scribe Coder, you can, do you can make your changes there um, and proceed as if it's a manual coding project. And that's what I wanted to say about AI Coder today. Thank you.